Okay guys, we've got a bunch of products here at First Man. We've got our men's lifestyle supplement, which is everything that a man needs on a daily basis. We've got our natural diuretic supplement, Defined, which allows you to get an angular face, removes all the water, especially good for summer. We've got our Male Advantage book, which is a paperback. You can order this, or you can get this in audiobook format or ebook format. We've got our Better Looking Man course, which I'll bring up pictures on screen now. And we've got my personal diet plan and fitness plan in ebook format. On top of this, guys, we've got a body wash coming out soon, part of the testosterone friendly range. We've got men's boxers and a whole clothing line coming out soon. A whole bunch of products, but for now, let's get back to the video that you actually wanted to watch. Okay guys, welcome back to another video. I have not been on camera in so long guys and I know I've been putting content out and you guys have been watching stuff but I swear to God, I probably haven't been on camera for like three weeks, okay? I, I took like a two week break. Um, I had the SMP before that, we've had heat waves and whatever so I just, I, I had like loads of leftover content that I was putting out. Uh, which scared the life out of the SMP guy, Jay, because he was just like, where's your... Like, why is your hair receded again? And I was like, no, it's from like two months ago or whatever. I had so much content left over, which is why when I put out that video recently where I did the speech at my dad's charity game, everyone was like, you look jacked because yeah, it's like a month between or whatever. So, you know, that was like the difference between the last video and the one that I, the short one that I just put out where I was doing the speech is probably like 40 days or something like that, which is crazy. Um, I always get imposter syndrome. I'm always like, I'm making money and I'm not technically doing work on the channel. Do you know what I mean? I'm working on other things, the streaming platforms. I mean, that's just jumped forward massively. Me and Hamza, we won't announce anything yet, but me and him have got some massive news on that for you guys. Some big, big stuff happening. Winter's going to be crazy. Um, it might even be before that. Stuff's accelerating rapidly, but I'll discuss with him first what he wants to announce. Maybe we do it together, which you guys will probably love. Um, but yeah, I always get imposter syndrome where I'm like, I'm not doing YouTube stuff yet. I'm getting, I'm kind of getting paid for YouTube. Like, I find it really weird. So I don't, I can't get like my mind right until I actually sit here and talk to you guys again. So the purpose of today's video guys, uh, is we're going to be talking about something I noticed when I was in London. So I was driving to London. I was just driving through London. Like the, the route I have to take from where I am to where, you know, where I got to go in London it takes me from west through the center, out the back into east, like you end up seeing everything, okay? You're at street level, you're, you're only traveling like 10, 20 miles per hour, it's a pain in the backside. Um, but you end up seeing like millions and millions of women, okay? Now, when I was in the car, obviously it gives you thinking time, doesn't it? And it got me thinking while I was driving along. Why is it that we see a beautiful woman and it's just instantly like, whoa, look at her, I've got to have her. What a great ass, what a great pair of tits, what a beautiful face, or who the hell is that? And all the guys in traffic are looking, and all the guys on the street are looking, she's just got instant attention. And it hit me at that moment, I was like, it's because everything that she is, is on show. Okay, if she was a billionaire, I don't really care. If she's famous, yeah, I, I care a little bit, most guys would. But if she was famous and ugly, I don't think anybody would care. Okay, so it's just like we like I didn't make the rules, and I I don't actually like this. I feel I feel a little bit bad about it, uh, but it's just the way society is. But you know, you you mention a woman, and everyone's like, "Is she hot?" You know, you mention a man, and it, like people aren't like, "Is he hot?" Do you know what I mean? It's like, is he a decent bloke? Is he a good guy? You know, is like how much can he bench? I imagine people aren't saying that, but do you know what I mean? It would be more down that route. And with women, it's just, is she hot? Is she nice? Is she sexy? Like, oh, I'm meeting this girl tonight. Is she nice? Do you know what I mean? Like, is she attractive is what I mean by nice. Um, you know, and that's what we base female attraction on. So it made me realize when I was sat in traffic and you could see all these beautiful women getting attention, whatever, for just existing, that it's because they're permanently marketing themselves by accident. Like, if you've got double D tits, how are you hiding that? Most women don't. They have cleavage and whatever. But even if she wants to hide it, they're still going to be there. Like, she could wear a thick jumper, you're still going to be like, she's got a rack on her, I can see it from here. So it's just like, whatever the ultimate value is of a woman, right? Which, I, I'm not the decider of this, I'm just saying what I see, so don't get angry at me. But, you know, 
it's, it's sex appeal, it's beauty, it's the size of your breasts, how nice is your ass, like, has she got a small waist and wide hips, like, has she got a beautiful face, like, that sort of stuff, right? Um, so that's what we value women on, and like I said, it's always there, it's marketable, right? As a man, this, like, you can be tall, you can be handsome, you can be jacked and whatever, and that's great, this, you know, it's going to get you some attention, but it's not the biggest weapon that you have in your arsenal, okay? And it's, it's really interesting because usually on this channel, I'm usually like the oldest guy and I'm, t I'm telling you younger guys how to live. And there's, you know, some people try and counteract it, but I'm 21 and all the guys who are good looking getting attention. But sometimes it's, just, you know, it's just refreshing for me to speak to somebody who's older. I met a guy the other day um, at a restaurant when I was with my friend and he was, he was, he was British, he was born in London, but he lived in LA, he was a film, he might be watching this video actually, shout out to you if you are, you're a lovely guy, and um, he was talking about how he lived in LA and whatever, and he, he said this one statement and it stuck with me big time, he was like, if you're under 28, women won't show you any time of day in LA, unless you're famous, because then they know you're caked, you know, or an athlete or whatever, but he was like, if you're under 28, they just know that you probably won't have cash, and he said you can be as like good looking as you want and whatever he said and it, like if you're chasing women they just don't want to pay you any attention he said the best thing you can do be over over 28 years old well dressed go to a bar sit there on your own mind your own business he said and every woman in there will be like that guy's famous that guy's caked that guy's important do you know what i mean right and it, to hear it from a guy who's older than me and it's just like yes this is what i've been saying for so long okay and to bring it back full circle, the point about women are always marketing their shit, okay? But they're not doing it on purpose. Some do, but it's always there. It's available. So you're seeing her highest value all the time. Because it's like, here she is. She's beautiful. She's sexy. I can see it. That's everything that she is in value terms, which, like I said, is sad, but that's what it is, right? As a man, I could walk down the street dressed in jogging bottoms and a hoodie, okay? Basically, for you Americans, as a tracksuit. And women would just be like, eh, do you know what I mean? They just wouldn't have any idea, okay? And then all of a sudden you put on clothes, like for example, like I'm wearing now, um, some like expensive loafers, a nice like a thousand pound watch, doesn't even have to be anything crazy, okay? Um, you get out of a nice car and suddenly the attention is 10x. She takes you more seriously. Okay, this is a, this is a big thing about um, life setup and framing. Okay, I'm, I'm doing a full video on this soon for you guys because I've always spoken to you about life setup, but I'm not spoken to you about framing. Now, life setup, for example, is putting yourself in a position in life where you've got the time to go to a restaurant at 11 a.m. Okay, life setup is putting yourself in a position in life where you're making enough money to go to an expensive restaurant. Okay, life setup is, you know, you work for yourself. So if you want to go to the restaurant at 11 a.m. with a friend, you can. You've got the ability to do it. Okay. Now, framing is how you look while you're there, okay? If you've got the expensive clothes on, the nice watch, um, maybe if you've bought the expensive wine, it's on your table, etc. Maybe people wouldn't notice, who knows, but I probably wouldn't be doing that at 11 a.m. I'm just trying to give you, you know, some tips there. Maybe if you've parked outside in a nice car and you're at the restaurant, whatever, it's basically all social proofing and validation, okay? Now, what I'm saying is, that like the life setup will get you there but the framing will change people's opinions of you okay andrew tate said before like you could have a nerd in a lamborghini and it's just it's a it's a rich tech nerd okay whereas you have a guy who's like gone to the gym he's jacked he's wearing a tailored suit you know he's got a little bit of stubble or something maybe the shaved head and girls are going you know maybe he's got tattoos on the forearms and whatnot and girls are like this guy's a drug dealer he's a mob boss he's important i just need to know who he is I'm really intrigued. He excites me, right? And that's what it takes for us, okay? It takes framing for us, which is the biggest point of this video. And maybe I haven't titled it yet, but maybe this will resemble the title. And um, it centers around reverse catfishing. I've never understood it, okay? Where, like, guy, like you, you, have, you ever seen that quote on social media? You lot probably have seen it, where it's like, the goal is to be rich, not look rich. Well, yeah, obviously, because you can't look rich without being rich, okay? So one chicken and egg, one has to come first. But at the same time, I, I don't get missing out on the advantages of being rich. Like, why would you not display your wealth? Why would you not display how well you're doing? Why would you not show the world that you've got your shit sorted and you're a grown man? Because that's what a lot of it is. It's like guys who go, 
yeah, you know, I make really good money, but I just wear hoodies and I just bum around and who cares? And it's like, well, you care because why, like, why did you become successful in the first place? Why did you put all that work in? It certainly wasn't to sit at home on a Friday and Saturday night and play with your dick. So there's a message for all you men out there, like framing, like who you appear to be, you know, and it's, uh, we're marketing ourselves. We're in a generation now where you can't be humble, okay? I'm sorry, like, I'd love to be that cool, calm, mysterious guy. You know, and like that guy said to, said to me, like, in LA, if you did that, you'd get a lot of attention. But then he said, if you weren't successful off the back of it, nobody gives a shit. You know, and you'd have to be, you'd have to be sort of successful to be at that venue in the first place. Do you see what I mean? So it's just like, you can try and be as humble as you want. But I think in this generation, you need to silently brag and what I mean by silently bragging is not going up to people and being like, hey, I'm a millionaire. You know, it's got to be, you've got to be doing certain things in your life that give the indications, right? And that is our version of having big tits, a nice ass, and a tiny waist and a pretty face. It's the same thing. Like, this is why fem females basically rule the world in terms of, like, sexual value, dating, whatever, the hashtag me too shit. It's because it's there for us to see. And they're becoming more provocative with it every single year dresses, skirts, whatever, becoming shorter, heels are getting fucking longer, um, or steeper, should I say, you know, the cleavage is becoming more exaggerated every single year, you know, girls getting their lips done, their tits done, their asses done, it's just like everything's getting more exaggerated, and they're pushing that in our faces all the time, and as primitive fucking monkeys, it's quite hard to not see like some beautiful nine out of 10 and be like, oh my God, I've got to go and talk to her. You know, I feel nervous. Oh my God, she's like, she's got all the value. And it's like, well, hang on. Like you've got a ton of value too. It's just, she doesn't know that yet, right? And how is she going to find that out? You can't go up to her and be like, hey, by the way, I'm a millionaire and I'm super successful. Like that's, that's, that's shitty, right? That's a dick move, okay? And this is why kind of framing life setup, this is why it's so important to men in this era. And I, I, like, I feel like it's a massive skill. I feel like I have that skill. Um, there's a few guys out there that have it, but I, I think 99.9% .9 of men on planet Earth have still yet to realize what's going on here. Like I said, the female, this is what I figured out when I was in the car, oh shit, this is why females are so sought after because their shit is always on display. That's their highest possible value, and here it is. It's like the equivalent of me driving down the road in a Bugatti. You know, girls would be like, oh my God, who on earth is that? Okay, and if I get out of the car and I'm not a fat, geeky slob, and I actually dress well, and I'm in shape and whatever, and I'm, I'm not 70, 80 years old, then it's like, oh fuck. We've got one here, ladies. We're going to have to pay attention. I'm going to go over. He's worth the risk. He outranks me. Right, and I'm not saying to you guys, you have to go and get a Bugatti, whatever. And what I'm saying is just try and make the best of yourself. You've got to frame yourself in a certain way. Now, there's a massive difference. I need to make a video on this at some point as well between cities and towns and whatever. I'm in a town at the moment. I've lived in cities too. Are we going back to the city eventually? In towns, there's still a little scent of like women are willing to get with the guy who's just a builder, okay, because he's, he's funny. There's still a little bit of that culture, but it's fading away more and more. In like the cities where the best women are, that just isn't the case anymore, okay? You, like, you can barely even talk to a woman if you're not a somebody, okay? It's got to that level now. And this is why framing life setup is so important. And this, like I said, why I don't understand reverse catfishing. Oh, I'm really successful, but I'm gonna hide it because I don't want to attract the wrong type of people. I, look, I get that to an extent. I attract the wrong sort of people too. I've had girls here that have done like lines of coke off the table and I've gone, wait, what? Like, wh why are you doing that? And like, you can leave or like, I'll never see you again. Do you know what I mean? That sort of thing. And you realize, oh, I know why she's here. Like, she just wants that good life. Like, yeah, maybe it's good for one night, whatever. Like, I didn't know you were like that. Seeing as you're here, we might as well fucking do it. Do you know what I mean? But like, I'm not saying do coke. I'm saying do sex, right? Do sex. And, um, you know, it's just like in, in that sort of sense. But, you know, over, over time you just go, okay, I don't really need this woman in my life. And it, you, can, you can attract like bad people. But at the same time, guys, like... You wouldn't attract anybody if you weren't displaying it to some extent, okay? The best, nicest women on the planet and the horrible, toxic ones, they're pretty much all looking for the same thing. And that is validation. Like, you, you, could, you could approach a woman in like, like, we've all seen online, right? The gold digger pranks, right? 90% of them are fake, but in the early days, that, that shit was real. It's just people are caught onto it now and they realize they couldn't actually get the footage because girls were like, oh, is this one of these YouTube pranks, right? I had somebody the other day, I handed her a cup. 
I was like holding too much shit and I was like, can you just hold this cup a second? And she was like, is this some sort of YouTube prank? I was like, like people are on fucking high alert now. I was like, no, I just got no spare hands. I need to sort my shit out. Put stuff in my pocket. I was like, all right, thank you. And just moved on. Like people are really scared of stuff now. And those uh, gold digger pranks back in the day, they used to be real. Okay, a lot of those early videos are legit. And you see a guy in like a tracksuit. Looks kind of bummy, she's not interested. Then somebody comes over, oh my God, can we have a picture? He walks up to his Lamborghini or whatever, and then suddenly she was in, she's interested. All that shit's fake now. But back in the day, I'm telling you, a lot of those videos were real because my old mentor used to know a lot of the guys that were filming them. And uh, he, I think he told us about like the concept before it was even a video. He was like, oh, they're gonna do this thing. They've got this video idea. I believe that's, what, I, I believe that's a true story. But it's so, we've been through so much shit. I can't remember 90% of the stuff anymore. The stuff that people tell me about my videos, I'm like, oh yeah, I did say that, I remember that. And it like, like brings up a whole new concept, do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that stuff was real back in the day. And that's one thing that men don't do, we don't advertise ourselves. You know, yeah, yeah, we're getting to the point now we're advertising like our bodies and whatever, we're advertising like, look how handsome, handsome I am, whatever. But it's like, that's not our thing. Okay, that's the female thing. It, it, does it help you to some extent? Of course it's going to. But like, the beautiful woman walking down the street with the massive tits, the nice ass, the tiny waist and the beautiful face in a tight red dress before a night out, like you're not, I don't care who you are, you're not, you could be the most handsome guy on the planet, you're not competing with that. You're just not competing with that to any extent. A woman would see a real handsome guy and be like, God, he's gorgeous, and then be immediately turned off if he lived at home with his mum. Okay, we, we wouldn't. We would be like, she's gorgeous. Oh, I live at home with my mum. Perfect. Right, that would come out of our mouths. I, I would, I'd be like, perfect. This woman needs a home. Do you know what I mean? She needs somebody to look after her. She clearly doesn't have any money. Like, I can fucking show her the world. Like, that's what I want to do. I want to be like the daddy role. Do you know what I mean? I'll fly you around the world. I'll take care of everything. Like, I'm going to save you from the shit life you've currently got. Like, every man's fucking dream. Do you know what I mean? Damsel in distress. In reverse, it doesn't work. So the one validation that women are looking for, you know, I just want to see that this guy's got his shit sorted. He's got his life sorted. And that could be dressing well, it could be, you know, a nice suit with a nice watch. You're coming out of a, like I've walked out of um, finance offices, okay? I've walked out of, fuck, where did I used to work? Well, I know it was in Bishopsgate, but I can't remember the number. 55 Bishopsgate, okay? I used to work in there. And uh, it's well known for having like, like whoever works in there is making good money, okay? It's, it's well known. I've walked out of the building and women have just like turned and just smiled and like just been like body language is just being like, please fuck me, please come and talk to me and whatever. And if I find them attractive, you know, then you might say something or whatever. But you, like I, I was in a relationship for like three, four years when I was in London, it's like the majority of the time. So I never really got the opportunity, but it was right there on a plate. Do you know what I mean? You might say one word, smile, keep moving, whatever. But if I was single, that would have been on a plate. You could have been like, hey, do you want to come up to the office? Like. It's, there's validation in who you are, okay? Like, it means less these days, but when a guy used to be like, I'm a doctor, it was like, come and fuck me right now, get me pregnant, right? That used to be a thing. Pilots were the same, you know, uniform, like that's, oh, women love a guy in uniform. Yeah, because it signified he was, you know, it's like a military thing. Oh, he's an officer. Like, God, that used to be a big thing. He's an officer in the military. Oh, he's a somebody, he's important. I want to be with him, right? This, and this is what we've, this is a lost art. This is something from like the 1940s, 1950s. We've lost this shit. Where it's like, instead of just being some bummy little guy walking down the street, like show off, show off. You have gotta do that on social media with online duality. And I get a lot of resistance when I say this. It's the easiest trick in the book, okay? It's the easiest trick in the book. Now you don't have to do it. I don't necessarily do it, to be honest. I will in the future, but I want a videographer to, in, to be able to do what I'm planning to do but I don't necessarily do it right now. But when I go out, I dress up, I look good. I only go to certain places. And let's say like I was sat at an Italian place recently, okay? I was dressed really well, I look good. And because it's middle of the day, the amount of female attention that you're getting, because they're working it out. They're like, how the fuck are you here at the middle of the day, dressed up, looking good, spending money like it's nothing? Okay, like how are you just sat here having a good laugh on like a, a Thursday at like 10 a.m.? like 2 p.m., whatever it was, I can't even remember, but it's like, it's not lunchtime. How the fuck are you here? What are you up to? What are you doing? Do you know what I mean? Who are you? That's the main question that women will ask. Oh, you're a somebody. You're worth getting to know. I just want to get to know you. I'm intrigued. Okay, and then they like, 
a woman can ask you, what do you do for a job? Okay, she finds you mega attractive. What do you do for a job? I'm kind of in between jobs right now. I'm unemployed. Switched off immediately. Okay, I've, ha I've had scenarios where like, I used, to have a, I used to have a friend, right? And we'd go up to the bar and like, I'd start talking to a girl or whatever and he would go, do you want me to pay for these drinks, mate? Because obviously you're unemployed. And I was like, what, like why are you such a dick? But, but the thing is, she was immediately switched off. And I was like, it doesn't matter what I say now, I'm fucked. Do you know what I mean? And I remember once, like, I came out of a club. I've told you guys this story before. Uh, my dad gave me his, like, old car. And it was, it was okay. It, like, it was kind of, I think it had a rim missing. It was kind of, like, dusty. And, like, it was kind of old. But it was like, fucking thanks, dad. I, like, it's a car. Like, guys go, that's amazing. Girls are like, ugh. Do you know what I mean? It's weird. But, um, and this girl was, like, really interested with me. Like, found me really good looking. Was, like, all over me. And I was like, I'd, like... She was really drunk, and I was like, look, I'll take her number, I'll drive her home. I was sober. I was like, I'll fuck her next time I see her. It'll be, it'll be better, too, because she'll be sober. And uh, we were walking back to my car, and she, she goes, which one's yours? And I pointed at it, and she, boom, immediately switched off. Took her hand off me, tried to flog me off to her friend, who was, like, a lot uglier. And she was like, oh, she really likes you, you should give her your number, and stuff like that. It just flogged me off immediately, right? And it was so obvious that it was the car that did it. Oh, you shouldn't be chasing women like that, though, women like that. I'm... That's all women. That's all, I don't care who you are, that's all women. I've dated some lovely women that don't really care about money, but they prefer it if you have money. Do you know what I mean? They don't want you to talk about it, they're not really interested, but it's like, please have money because it just makes life better, it makes this easier, I find you more attractive. I'm not gonna mention it too much, like it doesn't have to be millionaire level, but just have your shit sorted 50K per year and just like have a decent life, okay? I've seen women's faces when I've brought them up here. It just changes. They just, they wanna get married. Right, they start talking about like, would you ever settle down? What age do you think you want to have kids at? It's like, fuck, where did that come from? Oh, you know, I just thought we were vibing really well. It's like, no, it was like, it was, it was okay before that, but now it's fucking amazing, is it? Like, it just, it changes, do you know what I mean? Like, you tell people how many YouTube followers you got if they ask what you do for a job and whatever, and like, you've got your own businesses in this area and this area. It changes, like, men's reactions changes, they respect you more women find you more attractive immediately and like rightly so because it's like this guy's a winner he's got his shit sorted like why would you not like there's 99 percent of men out there are losers doing nothing it's like of course it would work right and that's an important message for you guys like you've got to start thinking about how you're framed how you look to the world women they're walking down the street they got their boobs out right they got a beautiful face it's there all the time that's what we're looking for sex appeal beauty you know just she's gonna look beautiful bouncing on my dick like, that's pretty much what goes through our heads. Oh, I wonder what those tits look like. Like, it's just, I bet she's got a tight pussy. Like, it's real simple, basic shit. And they're lucky in that sense, because they've got that all the time. It's just there. It's available. It's like if you could walk around with a signpost above your head, talking about, like, says what your net worth was, and you were a billionaire. Your life would be very fucking easy, do you know what I mean? So, as a man, we kind of need, like, don't blow the bank, don't fuck your life up because of it. But just presenting yourself in a certain way, once you're successful, once you put that work in, the male advantage years basically, you have to validate it. Because like, I'll give you another example. If I walk to the local shop and I grab some food and I walk back with carrier bags in my head, in my hand, in my head, in my hand, zero female attention. Oh, this guy's a bum, he's just gone shopping. Like, I swear to God, like, oh, why would you want to be with a woman like that? That's how women think. This guy's just a bum walking back from the shopping market, whatever. He clearly hasn't got a car because that's why that's the conclusions that they'll draw. When I, I there's another place like it's another Tesco, but it's massive. It's like further out. Sometimes I'll be like, yeah, I'll go to that one. I've got a bit more time, so I jump in the Range Rover. I'll drive to the Tesco. I'll come out with bags and I'll load them in the back of the Range Rover. Massive female attention. Women are smiling at you, you know, double looking at you. They're in the car with the husband and they're like side eyeing you as you drive past and whatever. It just changes. It's the same fucking situation. It just changes massively. Okay. This is why the outlier male effect is so good as well, because you get the combination of everything. Like if you're well-dressed, you're doing well for yourself, and it doesn't have to be breaking the bank, like I said, guys. But then also like you're in shape, you smell good, you know, these little things, it's like this guy has his life sorted, this is a real man. And they've, they've done studies where it's like, women believe that 20% of men are, are real men, okay? I personally think those studies are old, because like 20% sounds like nothing because 80% sounds so big. But when you divide that down, you're like, it's one in five. And I don't walk past one in five winners on the street. 
do you guys like maybe like somewhere like New York, LA, Miami, some of that? Maybe you do. I probably it's probably not true. When I lived in London, I wasn't walking past one in five winners. I didn't walk past one in five guys and go, "Damn, that's a success." Like it was more like one in every fifty. Do you know what I mean? When you go, "Wow, he like that's a dangerous guy. He's top level, whatever." So I think it's more like 0.5 to 1% of men now are actually getting attention, are considered a viable option by the highest percentage of women, women who are sevens and above, maybe even sixes. And then I think women who are fives and below, they're just, you know, they're dating everybody else. They're dating everybody else. I, and I see this all the time. I was going to do a separate video on this. I see so many tall, handsome, in-shape guys with women that are just like fives. They're just average. They've got, you know... You'd sleep with her if you had no other options and you were desperate one night and you were like, hey, she's pretty, you know, she's got, she's, she's okay. She's like, good, okay for the area. Like, she'll do for tonight. I, I see that shit all the time, but I see all the most beautiful women with successful men all the time, continuously, okay? And uh, like I said, that framing thing, women are walking along with their, they're marketing themselves all the time by accident. It's just there. That's, that's why they've got the power over us because it's just there for them all the time. Oh shit, she's beautiful. She doesn't look at you and go, oh shit, he's rich. Unless, you know, or shit, he's got his life together. Shit, he's doing well for himself. Damn, he's, uh, that's a successful guy. That's an important man right there. I respect him. How is she going to know that if you're not giving off those signals? That's why, I, that's why I do not understand reverse catfishing. Oh, I just drive a Prius and I, you know, I just wear normal clothes and, you know, at the end of the day, I want it to be rich. I don't want to look rich. You know, there's a lot of guys out there. It's like, why would you not have both? Why would you not signify to the world that you're a fucking high value man and you've got your shit sorted? I've never understood that because it's the only thing that we have. Okay. If you want it, if you want female attention, you're going to have to do it. Okay. Because until they can actually figure out who you are, they're not going to care about you. Yeah, he's a handsome guy, but so what? Right. He's tall. He's in shape. Yeah, but so what? Oh, he's successful. Oh, I'm mega interested now. It, I, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Like, as a guy who is six foot two, I think I'm, I think I'm pretty handsome. Um, I think I've improved myself a lot. I think I'm at the point now where I do, I, I do pretty well. I don't think I'm fucking Brad Pitt, but I do, you know. It's enough for a woman to be like, okay, yeah, like, that's fine with me. Like, he reaches that criteria. Like, he's, like, he's not the best looking guy in the world, but he's fucking, he passes the test, right? Um, I'm in really good shape, low percentage body fat. It, I didn't get crazy female, female attention until I started like social proofing my wealth until people started finding out like what I did for a job and who I was and whatever. And like, you know, so, like somebody comes up to you and takes a picture with you or says like, oh my God, are you first man or some shit like that? Are you Christian first man and whatever? And a girl overhears it. And now next thing you know, she's just like double taking you, checking you out, smiling at you. It's just like a different level. That, like, I, I'm basically what I'm trying to say to you guys is, I, is I've experienced all of it. Like, I've experienced being the, you know, you go on a night out and girls are like, you're really handsome. They're coming up to you and telling you you're really handsome because they're drunk and whatever. Like, I've had girls, like, squeeze your muscles. I've had girls say, I like tall guys. Oh, my God, you're tall. I love it. You know, I've had all the different tick boxes. The money one is crazy. The money, success, validation, respect that you, like, this, it's another level, okay? And that is our version of seeing a beautiful blonde with double D tits, a nice ass in a tight red black dress, whatever, okay? It's the exact same version. It's just we don't show it. We don't show it off. Oh, be humble. You know, like, stay quiet. Be humble. Don't brag about your wealth. It's like, all the guys that I see that aren't being humble, like, Andrew Tate, for example, um, what's another good example? Basically, basically anybody on social media, but Andrew takes a great example. They're getting women. They're getting attention. They're getting women flocking to them. Do you know what I mean? Like, the difference between, like, I've been friends with certain girls for a long, long time, and, you know, there's no real sexual interest there. Then they find out from somebody how much money you're making, or they see your following on social media, and then suddenly they become really interested in you. Do you think that's by accident? Oh, we've been friends all this time. I've always liked you. It's like, no. So you've got to find ways to show people that that's happening. And that comes from life setup, number one, to give you access to do it. And number two, most importantly, framing. How do you appear to the world? What is the impression that you're giving off? Okay. 
It's like, uh, I remember Hamza said before in a video that if you wear branded stuff to the gym, you get more attention because that's a validation. You know, if you just go wearing old shorts and a t-shirt, this guy's kind of broke, he's kind of bummy. Whereas you go wearing like the latest Gymshark shit and you look at, you look like modern, professional, expensive, you know, this guy actually cares about what he wears. You know, people are gonna respect you more. They're gonna have a different impression of you. It works in every single area of life for men. You know, as a woman, a woman can buy a five pound top and a 10 pound pair of shorts. If she's gorgeous, it doesn't matter. She looks unbelievable. As a man, it's like we're permanently being judged. We're permanently being judged on our success. We're permanently being, uh, you know, is he validated? Who's he friends with? You know, that sort of thing. Is he friends with like high level people and whatever? Like you've got to frame your life in a certain way, guys. You've got to work your balls off to do that. And then that is when you will get your male advantage moment. You will get the sort of attention that females get from just walking down the street and looking hot. You know, girls will notice that about you. This is a guy who's doing well for himself. I just wanna, like I've had in the last, the last six months especially since I got lean again, like really lean, I've had at least 20, 30 women, I'm not counting, but I'm just you know, rough balling it. I've had at least 20, 30 women ask me, do you wanna go for a drink sometime? It's, it's always the same line, female game is shit. Do you wanna go for a drink sometime? You know, I've, I've probably been rejected once out of like 100 attempts, okay? Which, you know, most of those women probably had boyfriends and whatever. So when I look at that, I go, okay, yeah, that's, that's some pretty fucking good results. I, you know, I can, I can remember one girl that said no, and she was real nice about it. So it was like, she was probably in a relationship, but she thought I was nice or, you, do you know what I mean? She was really kind about it, really nice. We kept talking for a little bit and I just, we went our own ways and whatever. So it's just like, if you want better results, guys, I know what I'm talking about here because I've proved it in like the last six months to a year. You've just got to have that framing in place. You've got to validate yourself. You've got to think, What's my version of big tits, nice ass, thin waist, beautiful face, you know, wide hips, whatever it is that you find attractive on a woman. You see your most perfect, gorgeous woman next time you're walking down the street or driving, look at her, don't be creepy, but like look at her and go, oh yeah, like it's everything that I've ever wanted is there, it's marketed. My, my friend's ringing me, I better take it guys, but you get the point, okay? But just do that for yourself, frame it, okay? Right, see you again guys. Okay guys, we've got a bunch of products here at First Man. We've got our men's lifestyle supplement, which is everything that a man needs on a daily basis. We've got our natural diuretic supplement, Defined, which allows you to get an angular face, removes all the water, especially good for summer. We've got our Male Advantage book, which is a paperback. You can order this, or you can get this in audiobook format or ebook format. We've got our Better Looking Man course, which I'll bring up pictures on screen now. And we've got my personal diet plan and fitness plan in ebook format.